Hey, this is Ken, and today we're going to be demonstrating how to add some juice to your games with easing. If you're not familiar with the concept of juice in games, it's a term that means your game's elements can bounce, squish, wiggle, pop, or make noise when you interact with them so that your world feels more organic and alive. These are things that don't necessarily affect the gameplay, but can provide important feedback to your players and just make your games more fun to play. There are lots of ways to add juice, but today we're focusing on a technique called easing. Easing just means a way to transition slowly between two values over time. Different types of easing functions can make your transitions behave in wildly different ways. We can send the ease output into our game's objects, size, position, rotation, or other properties to animate them and make their behavior look and feel more dynamic. Let's start with an example. Here's a simple dungeon game. When we click to start, the camera moves to the dungeon and we can see that all the basic elements for a working game are in place. We have a player that can move around. There are some ghosts that move back and forth and spiders that rotate to watch us and will attack if we get too close. The chests will open up when we touch them and when we contact an enemy, we lose a life. It's all pretty straightforward and even though it works and already looks pretty good thanks to some fantastic free game art from Kenny.nl, it definitely does not feel very juicy. To start with, let's try to make the title screen feel a little less static by animating it with an ease behavior block. We'll add an ease block from the logic and math section and a size block from the properties section and connect the ease output to our size percentage. Now we can add a once trigger to start the transition when the game starts and test it out. Okay, the size is animating when the game starts now, but I think we can do better. Flowlab provides lots of different easing functions to choose from, so let's use Bounce for a little more personality. We can also select whether we want the beginning, end, or both sides of the transition to be eased, so I'm going to use Ease Out so that the end of the transition will get a bounce. I'll change seconds to 2 so that the transition takes longer, change the start value to 100% and the end value to 130%, and test again. Okay, that looks pretty good now, but it doesn't last long. We can add a timer and a toggle to reverse the tween so that the transition switches between growing and shrinking. So now, with a really tiny amount of logic, we've made the start screen look a lot more dynamic. Next, let's address the jump between screens. Right now, when you click the screen, a mouse trigger will set the camera's Y position to zero so that it shows the dungeon. Instead of an instant jump, let's use an ease to make the switch feel more impactful. We'll add an ease block, as before, to transition the camera's Y position from negative 600 to zero over one second. This time we'll use a back easing function to make it wobble a bit at the end. If we ease the Y position of the barrels and chests too, they'll bounce a bit when the camera moves and make the startup feel even better. Now that feels a lot better. Let's compare before and after. Okay, that's way better. Now we can just use the same process to add easing animations to other game elements. We can ease the size of our treasure chests, just like the game screen. But this time we'll use a sine wave for the easing function and ease both ends of the transition to make it appear to be pulsing. This not only looks more interesting, but it helps draw the player's attention to the chests to make them more obvious. We can also add a sine wave ease to the ghost's Y position to make them appear to be floating as they move. Smoothing the player's movement with easing makes moving around the level feel a lot better as well. Now the game's starting to feel pretty juicy, but taking damage still doesn't feel very impactful. A couple of ease blocks connected to your camera can make a really simple camera shake, which will give the enemy collisions a lot more weight.
Okay, now compare what we started with with what we have now. Small tweaks like this can make a massive difference to your game's feel, so it's worth being on the lookout for places where adding a little easing can make your game feel more alive. Our example feels like a completely new game without changing any of the rules or mechanics. It's more interesting and way more fun to interact with. There are lots more ways to add juice to your game, and we'll cover more in the next video in this series. Thanks for watching.